Welcome to today's lesson, Other Trigonometric Functions. We're going to start with example one. Find the exact values of the six trigonometric functions of 390 degrees. Because we said exact values, this means we're not supposed to use our calculator. If we're not using our calculator, this means that we should be able to do this from our unit circle. Now 390 degrees is not on our unit circle, but if we subtract one full rotation, which would be 360 degrees, we get 30 degrees. So 30 degrees and 390 degrees are coterminal angles. So that means that they share all the same characteristics. So I can just take the sine and cosine of 30 degrees from my unit circle to answer this question. So when you think about where 30 degrees is, 30 degrees is the small angle. So that means its x coordinate is the long side, which is the square root of 3 over 2, and its y coordinate is the short side, 1 half. So I'm going to say then that the sine of 390 is equal to 1 half. The cosine of 390 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. The tangent of 390 is going to be sine over cosine, or 1 half, divided by the square root of 3 over 2. The 2's cancel and this becomes 1 over the square root of 3 and if we rationalize this becomes root 3 over 3. Now the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So cosecant of 390 is 2. The secant of 390 is the reciprocal of root 3 over 2 so that's 2 over the square root of 3 and if we rationalize that we get 2 root 3 over 3 and then finally the cotangent of 390 is the reciprocal of tangent and if tangent was 1 over root 3 then cotangent is going to be the square root of 3. So it turns out that the six trigonometric functions can be classified as either even or odd. If you remember the test for an even function is f of negative x must equal f of x. Cosine and secant are even. That means that the cosine of negative t equals cosine of t and the secant of negative t is equal to the secant of t. Now the test for an odd function was f of negative x has to equal negative f of x. Well the other four functions, sine, tangent, and the reciprocals cosecant and cotangent are odd, which means the sine of negative t is the same as the negative sine of t, the tangent of negative t is the same as the negative tangent of t, the cosecant of negative t equals the negative cosecant of t, and the cotangent of negative t equals the negative cotangent of t. Example 2. A. If the secant of angle t is 2, what is the secant of negative t? Well, secant, we were told, is an even function. So that means that the secant of negative t is exactly the same as the secant of t. So in our case then, the secant of negative t is going to be equal to 2 because 2 was the value of the secant of t. Part b, if the cotangent of angle t is root 3, what is the cotangent of negative t? So we were told that cotangent is odd. That means that the cotangent of negative t equals the negative cotangent of t. Well, we were told that the cotangent of t is equal to the square root of 3. So the cotangent of negative t is going to be equal to the negative of the cotangent of t, which is negative root 3. So now we're going to review some fundamental identities. First we're going to review the reciprocal identities. We know that secant is equal to 1 over cosine, cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, and cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent. But we also learned what's called a quotient identity when we saw that tangent was equal to sine over cosine. Well, if cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, then cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. Example 3. Using the coordinates from the unit circle, A, evaluate the tangent of 45 degrees. Well, we know that the coordinates of 45 degrees are root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, which means the cosine and the sine are both root 2 over 2. So that means that the tangent of 45 is equal to the sine divided by 
the cosine, and anything divided by itself is equal to 1. Part B, evaluate secant of 5 pi over 6. Well, remember that 5 pi over 6 is over here in quadrant 2. It's the small angle, which means that its x-coordinate is the long side, and that's negative and its y-coordinate is the short side and it's positive, so its ordered pair is negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half, and secant is reciprocal with cosine, so we know then that the secant of 5 pi over 6 is equal to 1 over the cosine of 5 pi over 6. So now I'll substitute in the cosine of 5 pi over 6, which is negative root 3 over 2, I'll find the reciprocal and I get negative 2 root 3 over 3 after I've rationalized the denominator. For example 4, we're going to practice simplifying trigonometric functions and basically that just means rewrite this in terms of one trigonometric function in the numerator. So I'm going to start by replacing secant with 1 over cosine and tangent with sine over cosine. Now we know that dividing fractions is like multiplying by the reciprocal, so this becomes 1 over cosine t times cosine t times sine of t. The cosines cancel and now I have 1 over sine of t, which I can rewrite as its reciprocal cosecant t. So now we're going to talk about some new identities called the Pythagorean identities. And for this we need to go back to what we first learned when we talked about a unit circle. And so we created this triangle that had a hypotenuse of 1. We knew that one leg was x and the other leg was y. And because this is a right triangle, this is subject to the Pythagorean theorem. So I can say that y squared plus x squared is equal to 1 squared. But we also learned that x is equal to cosine of theta and y is equal to sine of theta. So I'm going to substitute those in for x and y. So this becomes sine of theta squared plus cosine of theta squared is equal to 1. Now it's a little tedious to have to write these parentheses, sine of theta squared. The problem is, is that sine, if I drop the parentheses, sine of theta squared is not the same as sine of theta whole thing squared. So we have a little bit of a shorthand that we use so that we don't have to write parentheses. So if we have sine of theta squared, we write this as sine squared theta. So I'm going to rewrite this now as sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And that's our first Pythagorean identity. Now watch what happens though if I were to divide every term by cosine squared. So sine squared over cosine squared is equal to tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1 and 1 divided by cosine squared is secant squared. And that is our second Pythagorean identity. Now let's go back to our original identity one more time and this time we're going to divide everything by sine squared. So sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. Cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotangent squared and 1 over sine squared is equal to cosecant squared. So these three equations are considered our Pythagorean identities and these allow us to relate sine to cosine, tangent to secant, and cotangent to cosecant. Example 5. If cosine t equals 12 thirteenths and t is in quadrant 4, find the exact values of the remaining five trigonometric functions. So I'm going to start by drawing a triangle in quadrant 4 that has this cosine. Okay, I have no idea what the measure of angle t is, but if it has a cosine that's equal to 12 thirteenths, that means that the adjacent side is 12 and the hypotenuse is 13. So this has to be 12 and that has to be 13. Now I would use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side length, but this is actually a Pythagorean triple and so I know that my missing side length is 5. But in case you forgot, 12 squared or 144 plus 5 squared or 25 gives me 169 and the square root of 169 is 13. So now that I've 
labeled the lengths of the three sides of my triangle, I need to consider which quadrant we're in, which is quadrant four. And in quadrant four, any y values need to be negative. So I'm going to label the vertical side with a negative five so that the values of my trigonometric functions will be correct. So I'm going to first say that sine of t, which is opposite over hypotenuse, would be negative five thirteenths. Tangent of t, which is opposite over adjacent, would be negative five twelfths. Then the reciprocal of sine, which is cosecant of t, will be negative thirteen fifths. The reciprocal of cosine, which is secant of t, is going to be equal to a positive thirteen twelfths. And finally, the cotangent of t is going to be negative twelve fifths. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.